One of my great mentors down in Frisco is with us tonight, Valley News Live Sports Director Beth Hull, to break down some of the game from Saturday, but also the future of the Bison. I mean, it's very easy to see what they've got coming back next year. They might be back in Frisco to win a six-pack. First off, thank you very much. I don't much. like that one. I don't either. I don't like six-pack. Let's call it a pick six. Yeah, but I don't, I don't like a Th pick They're going to pick six. Is, six. But as a QB, you're like thinking, the last oh, I don't want to throw a pick six. It's not all about you, Chris. I think, you know what? They've had some outstanding interceptions in the last couple of some serious, important pick sixes. Like in Jordan Champions was, it wasn't a pick it six, a pick but six, it was still a great Yeah, interceptions. Pick. So your biggest takeaway from Saturday was what? Total domination. I mean, I think everybody had the right idea in giving Jacksonville State some credit, expecting a game out of them. You know, they've dominated. They've been number one all year. They have these huge SEC transfers, which is supposed to be, you know, even the worst of the SEC is the best of every, you know, everybody talks about it. So if we were all right to give them credit. You had to. But in the end, it was just total domination. And I think that was evident across the board. If the Bison don't come in number one next year off the top, people are nuts. What, what do you think it is? I mean, actually, my wife asked me this last night. She's like, why do you think they just can, or excuse me, this morning, it's all kind of running together. But <laughs> why do you think they're such a powerhouse? I mean, to win five in a row and to do it with such dominance. I think you, you hear it time and time again when you talk to these guys. And I know you had the opportunity. Great interview there with Chris Kleiman. But you got the chance to talk to some of these guys and see some of the alumni around here. Uh, when they were on the pregame show on Saturday, they talked about the culture of Bison football. You saw it in the 200-plus alumni on the football field for a practice. I mean, it was outstanding, and I think it's just 100% culture. They bring these guys up. They recruit the kind of guy yeah. that's going to buy into it. They can tell when they're sitting in a living room. They know what they're getting into. I mean, for a guy like Easton Stick to lead this football team undefeated for the eight games that he was playing, and he genuinely said it's an honor to see Carson Wentz out there that's the kind of guys, that's the culture, that's the character of these guys. They care more about the guy next to them than, the, than themselves. Well, I love his motto, humble and hungry. I, I mean, you've been in North Dakota now for quite some time. There's just not a, a lot Six of... Six football seasons. But, you know, you think about North Dakotans, there's just not a lot of braggadocious North no. Dakotans. I think you, it's easy to recruit that kind of character of a guy. So, but they're, bringing the, they're going across the nation and finding these guys. They're going to Florida and getting these guys to come to negative 25 degrees with wind chill, uh, they're finding them. It, it's not just North Dakota guys. It, there's a lot of great North Dakota, Minnesota guys on this team, but they're going across the nation and finding the right guys. Let's go out into the future. I know this coming weekend, I think, is a big recruiting weekend for them. Or absolutely. It's right. coming up. Yeah, and yeah absolutely. So talking about what you see you know, next year, they got Iowa in the second game. Are Eastern they going to be back be in, in Frisco, and even not just next year, but the next couple years? Next, I mean, when you look at it, think about how much we talked about the young guys on this team this year. We talked about how influential Robbie Grimsley was as a safety to learn that position. That was like one of the – everybody obviously praised Nick DeLuca, but a big one for a lot of the alums that we spoke to, they talked about Robbie Grimsley and how difficult of a position that is to pick up. Colton Hegel a guy who played safety, Christian Dudzik, a guy who played safety. Those guys played record-setting snaps for NDSU football, said Robbie Grimsley is impressive to them. The way what he's been able to do and come in and do as a true freshman wow. to figure out that position. And then you just think about all the other young Bruce Anderson. I mean, it's terrifying to think yeah. what he could be doing as a senior. The only thing standing in Bruce Anderson's way of being – the best running back in NDSU football history is himself. I mean, he just really needs to stay the course because the sky's the limit for him. I mean, and it, and it goes across the board. Not to mention, coaches show all year. We talked about all these future crops, and Coach Kleiman said, he, he routinely said, one of the best we've ever had. And he, Coach Kleiman isn't someone just to, to give right. praise if it's not there. And they are going to be good. They're going to be scary good. They're going to be like, what was that, 2013 good? Yeah, 2000, it was, it was the undefeated years, season. Yeah. yeah, they all blend together now. Really good, that, though. I mean, this could be a run of, you know, eight eight in a row, possibly. And, and the thing that I look at this past year is just the coaching job. And Coach Kleiman and I touched on it, but these guys, to, to make the shifts and changes they did defensively, to have this kind of play performance to me is stunning. Quickly, the Vikings, I don't want to touch on it too much, but in your opinion, biggest choke ever in Vikings history? You know what? I don't think the problem was Blair Walsh missing the I mean obviously yes that lost the game they had the opportunity to win it but the problem was the defense 
letting the Seahawks continue to make it down the field there. I think the defense kind of just, I don't know if their brain froze or what happened there, but something happened. And um, I, think, I think the defense gave up a little bit. They let off the gas a little bit. The Seahawks capitalized, and it was they put Blair Walsh in that position. So I guess you could call it a choke. Great job in Frisco. Great Thank job you to you. For Thanks for joining us. It was a lot of well, fun. It fun. It's it's challenging, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was great to watch you and Morgan because I'm kind of the rookie, <laughs> just like fish out of water, and you guys are like, Bird, do this, and then and to watch these guys go and how hard they work. So that's why they're able to come back and give you such great coverage of NDSU. So thank you for that. It was Absolutely. great. It was this is our last time. Bison breakdown segment for not for the year, but That's for not a while. true. I mean, think about it. We've got to talk about Carson Wentz and Joe That's Hay true. going through their Senior Bowl stuff and then hopefully NFL Combine stuff. So we've got plenty more to break down. All right. We'd love to know your point of view. We're going to come back with a quick uh, feedback segment at the end. Just say a special thanks to all the people at NDSU and, of course, Bison Nation. Stay with us. Much more coming up right here on 630 Point of View.